Hey everybody, as always, Jarek here, and I have never quite cared about 007. I know it's heresy to say that, but not a big movie guy, and the spy thing never really appealed to me. So that's why I wanted to make a video of Quantum of Souls, because this almost isn't a 007 game just by its nature. And I thought it would be interesting for someone that isn't into 007 to make a video about the most odd 007 game in the bunch. But before I do that, I need to thank today's sponsor. It is rare that I have a sponsor that I actively want to talk about, but this is such a sponsor. Today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with millions of people involved. Skillshare is aimed at anyone who wants to learn, no matter of your skill level or how much time you have. Most classes are under 60 minutes with short lessons that fit any schedule. So you know that thing you've been wanting to learn for the last three or four years, but you keep putting it off? Well, Skillshare makes it easy to get into that thing. It's curated specifically for learning, there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, meaning that nothing will ever take you out of the zone. And its annual subscription is under $10 a month. You can learn illustration, graphic design, animation, creative writing, and many more. But the one people ask me the most about is video editing. There's tons of classes on film and video. However, the class that caught my eye was Digital Poster Design by Temi Coker. You may be asking why I would care about this. Well, I'm kind of lacking in the graphic design department. And when you think about it, a YouTube thumbnail is just a poster for your video. And if you look at my thumbnails, they're not very good. To be honest, I rely on the graphic designers that made the cover of said game I'm covering because they already put a lot of effort and work into drawing your eye to that cover. However, the rest of the thumbnail is just big, bold letters and a screenshot of the game, so I could use a lot of work in this regard. If any of this sounds interesting to you, well, the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click that link down below in the video information will get a free trial of premium membership. I want to give a huge thanks to Skillshare. I really like what they're doing, and they are a perfect sponsor for this channel. Ah, oh, Quantum of Solace. I played this game when it came out and remember vaguely liking it. Not thinking it was the best thing ever, but not exactly hating it, which may be a surprise because this game was made by Treyarch. Yes, that Treyarch, the Call of Duty Treyarch. They were working on this while they were working on World at War, and it was made by Treyarch's B Team. The development cycle was troubled to say the least. It was being made alongside the movie, and the script was constantly changing. They also didn't have good communication with people working on the movie. The fact that they were even able to get this game out is amazing in its own right. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about the PC port because it's far from perfect. Now it's not terrible. There are definitely worse ports out there. In fact, I was shocked to find out that this game from 2008 launched and immediately recognized I had a 1440p monitor and I didn't have to change anything involving my resolution, which is nice. It also has most of the options you would expect to have in a PC release. It's very similar to that of the Call of Duty ports of this time, so you should know there's going to be some problems involved. There's three major problems I picked up right away. The first one is that this is a Games for Windows Live game. Oh boy, this doesn't pose too much of a nuisance for single player, this just means you need an offline account, otherwise you won't be able to save. It also means you can't get achievements, but I don't really care. It also means that the multiplayer is dead, which is really sad. I love the multiplayer and I'll talk about it later. There are two bigger problems that I found immediately though. Yes, Jarek the FOV dragon coming back. There's no FOV slider and the default FOV is 65, which is terrible. However, a much, much bigger problem than that is that this game is locked to 30 FPS. 30 FPS is the cap. The frame rate won't go any more than that. Thankfully, I found this nifty fix that allows me to raise my FOV and uncap the frame rate. This is not without problems though. For starters, I found that raising the FOV above 80 starts making the animations look really weird, so I kept it at 80, which is still suboptimal, but better than 65. I mean, this is just 90 FOV and those arms are already looking real messed up. But the bigger problem comes when you uncap a frame rate in an old game. This can cause some serious bugs, and this game is no exception. For starters, this game has an in-game mechanic that requires you to balance on a beam, and at 60 FPS, this becomes entirely busted. Thankfully, this fix comes with something you can check that will turn on a cheat that makes it so this dot will stay in the middle and you don't have to worry about it. This doesn't affect the game negatively. I mean, I'm sure you're not playing this game for a balanced mini game. The bigger issue with raising it above 30 FPS is that the game will quite literally crash or be unplayable at certain points. Trying to climb out of this elevator shaft while at 60 FPS, you will die no matter what, you cannot continue. This part here where you need to jump the gap on the train, 
Well, it won't even give you the prompt if you have it at 60 FPS, you just walk off and die every single time. The good news is those are the only situations where the game will break and everything else is playable without an issue, so I definitely would recommend installing this fix. So when you come across those two parts in the game, just change the FPS back to 30 in this program and you should be able to continue, then put it back to 60. As for the graphics themselves, for a game that came out in 2008, I mean, it looks like a game that came out in 2008, it doesn't stand out as being one of the better ones like Far Cry 2 or one of the worst ones. It's pretty status quo and in that regard I don't have any complaints. What I do have complaints about though is the audio mixing. It's awful. Cutscenes are always super quiet compared to the game even with audio at 100% and anytime you go indoors there's this awful echo effect and it just sounds hideous. It seems louder than everything else happening, and it's just ear piercing if you have to listen to it for a long period of time. Oh, and also apparently explosions sound like that slow motion bass boost noise on the last level. I don't know why they sound like this. What? It, is it just me? Am I the only one hearing this, like, bass explosion? It's over for you, but not for me. Why is it still playing? Now we move on to the story, and this is where me not watching the movies really hurts, because I have no idea what was going on. Now, keep in mind, this game's development cycle did not favor it. The story already is kind of confusing because it jumps from place to place between Quantum of Solace and Casino Royale. However, if you've watched the movies, you probably have a vague idea of what's going on. If you haven't, you're just not gonna know what's happening. This is where someone will probably chime in and say, well, duh, you don't understand what's going on. You never saw the movies, you idiot. That's your fault, not the game's fault. That's where I will say, F you, you're wrong. I shouldn't have to look to outside sources to understand the story contained in a game. Doesn't matter if it's comics or movies, everything should be understandable in the game. This isn't to say that it's a complete mess and I don't know who characters are and I couldn't pick up some things here and there, but it's definitely not coherent. That being said, I'm not a 007 fan, so I'm not gonna try to explain anything more because I know, <laughs> I know virtually nothing about the franchise. And I know if I try, I'll get plenty of comments that are something along the lines of, well, actually he goes to Poland for this, not Germany. And I can't stress enough how much I don't care. So let's move on to something that I do care about, the gameplay. This is why I have so much interest in Quantum of Solace. This game is a weird mix of Call of Duty meets Rainbow Six Vegas. I know quite a few people don't like this game because it more or less isn't a 007 game. It's basically a Call of Duty game, but that's kind of why I did like it. Not my favorite, but I definitely enjoyed it, which is more than what I could say for other 007 games. You're probably confused because I don't like Spunk or Wii Wii games, but I can tolerate this game. Why is that? Well, it does quite a few different things that make me not hate it as much as, say, the Call of Duty single player campaigns. For starters, the big inclusion that I'm sure you've already noticed is the cover system. I have a huge soft spot for a cover system like this. I love Rainbow Six Vegas, and something about this just clicks in my head and feels right. This also does wonders for the Call of Duty formula. No longer are you staring at a wall waiting for your health to come back, no, you have an actual cover system. This feels like even when you are taking damage, you are being involved instead of just waiting to shoot the next person. The next thing is that the game very, very rarely pushes you to do things at its pace. You can go at whatever pace you want to with the exception of a few scripted events, like when you need to crawl out of an elevator shaft before it blows up. Stuff like that kind of sucks, but this game doesn't have a whole lot of it. It's mostly just a linear first person shooter that you can walk through and shoot people at your own pace. It's a one and done type game, a game where you see all the content and see all the guns and shoot some enemies and then forget about it after you beat it. But I think the real reason I didn't mind this game is because it had a lot of quality of life improvements from the Call of Duty formula. Like I said, the big one is the cover system, but there's a few other small things. Even something as simple as having a little bar on the bottom left to see your stamina so you know when you're gonna get an asthma attack before you can start Start sprinting again. Or a better example, being able to change the fire modes of your gun. I love the fact that this game has a select fire M14. M14s do fire in semi and full auto, it's just not very practical to fire them in full auto. This game also gets the rate of fire horribly wrong, but no other games do this, and I just like having a fully automatic M14.
For that matter, all the guns feel pretty good. I mean, this game does genuinely feel like World of War or Black Ops 1, and I got a big soft spot for that kind of Treyarch Call of Duty. In my mind, there's a really big gap between Black Ops 2's feel and before, and Black Ops 3 feel and after. Personally, I really don't like how Black Ops 3 feels and after. Something changed in Treyarch. Yet Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, World of War, that has this very distinct feel that I love. Keep in mind, I'm talking about multiplayer here, not really single player. I don't care too much about Call of Duty single player. In fact, Quantum of Solace is the way I would have liked to see Call of Duty go. Call of Duty didn't need to try to quote unquote innovate by stealing things from more popular genres of the time. We don't need hero shooter elements in Call of Duty. We don't need high movement in Call of Duty. That's no longer Call of Duty. It just feels like garbage. In my mind, Black Ops 2 was the last good Call of Duty game and Call of Duty did not come back until Modern Warfare 2019. Everything in between then sucks. Don't at me. Anyway, my point here is that this game has that feel and I think that's the reason I liked it more than I should have. Along with some unique guns like a ridiculous rate of fire 22 calico, this is way more fun than it should be. But like I said, this game isn't flawless. Even the things I like about it could use a bit of work. For example, the cover system. Now this works and it is functional. For a first person to third person game, I think the only one that has done this better is Rainbow Six Vegas. However, there's some small things about this cover system that bother me. For one, you can't lean around corners with the movement keys, and in my mind, I just want to. The only way to lean over cover is to press the aim button, which isn't really a complaint. I mean, that works fine, it's just hard to get adjusted to. The bigger problem with the cover system is that blind fire is way too good. You see, in Rainbow Six Vegas, blind fire is incredibly inaccurate. The reason it is is because none of your body is exposed, yet you can still see the enemy. So if you could just poke your gun up over the wall and shoot someone from 30 feet away, that'd be a little busted. Rainbow Six Vegas balances this out by making the blind fire incredibly inaccurate and putting sweet spots on your hands. Yes, you take a lot of damage if you get shot in the hand in Rainbow Six Vegas. Quantum of Solace doesn't do any of these things. Blind fire is kind of the way to go, and if you really want to play that way, you can just blind fire throughout the entire game. I tried not to because that's kind of boring and lame, but blind fire really is broken. Especially with the shotgun. My god, this shotgun is so powerful, and I actually love this. I don't have any grenades either. Bro, this shotgun's actually busted. Look at that. This brings me to the multiplayer, which unfortunately is dead because games for Windows Live. The multiplayer is where I put most of my time, and that's because this is just another Call of Duty multiplayer, but with a cover system, and I'm 100% down for that. All the footage you're seeing here is quite old, so pardon the quality. I don't even have to explain much. It has the improvements that I mentioned earlier, a stamina bar, being able to change the select fire modes, in a Call of Duty style multiplayer. You have your loadout where you can choose your guns, your gadgets and whatnot, and it plays out like you would expect. Like I seriously don't have to explain much more. I just found this to be way more fun than it needed to be. It was like a lost Black Ops game. I would actually love if they re-release this game so we could get back into the multiplayer. Granted, good luck re-releasing a movie tie-in. Yeah, there's no way they're getting the rights for that. So in conclusion, I found this game more fun than I probably should have. It's the only 007 game that I cared about in any way. I can understand if people don't like this game. If you're into 007, then the story is all over the place and the gameplay is entirely lacking that sort of spy stealth espionage. However, take a guess what I don't like stealth at all. I hate stealth gameplay. So yeah, you can see why I like this game. Stealth gets extra bad if the game was not made for stealth in mind, and then they try to shove in a don't get seen or you instantly fail stealth section. Fuck any game that does this. I can respect Splinter Cell, genuinely good game, but I cannot respect random stealth sections in game that shouldn't have them. Quantum of Solace though just kind of didn't try. There is a stealth system, but the moment you get seen, you can just kind of shoot everyone. And the game seems to want you to do that. Every single area is full with perfect cover and you can tell it's a combat encounter, but if you're stealthing through, then you just never shoot anyone in it. Also, it's just more fun in this game to shoot everything. So I just kind of said, fuck it and started shooting everything. In actual conclusion, if you enjoy sort of loud shooters, then you will probably enjoy this game. If you're looking for a true 007 game with spies and espionage and stealth, you really won't like this game. But that about sums up what I wanted to say. A big thanks goes to my sponsor Skillshare. The first 1,000 of my subscribers get a free premium membership, so check that out. Click the link down below in the video information. Also, a big shout out to everyone that joined me over on Twitch. I'm I'm so close. I'm so close to getting a Twitch partner. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jerry 4 dragon You can go ahead and check that out. Follow over there. If you subscribe over on Twitch, you get to see my videos ahead of time. Thank all of you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.